And the scripture was fulfilled as it was said, and Paul quotes this too. No, he doesn't quote this. Uh, yes, he does. And Abraham believed on God and was counted for him as righteousness. That's how Paul constructs his theology on that. So you know this is being aimed at a Paul type uh, adversary. And he was called friend of God. Uh, friend of God is in the Damascus doctrine. Abraham is a friend of God. Isaac is a friend of God. It's in column three of the Damascus doctrine. And he was declared just by works, not by faith only, and so on and so forth. And, it, and it, to drive the point home, so faith apart from works is dead. So that's the James imposition. So why am I reading that to you? Now I've lost my other place by doing that. Um, I was in chapter four. It's so oh, difficult. That's why I've got all these little tabs in here. It doesn't help me. You know, it go back to Peter uh, 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 falling into the Sea of Galilee for lack of what? Faith. That's the reason I say that that's a falling presentation of the situation. Oh, Peter, if you had sufficient faith in Christ, you would have walked on the Sea of Galilee. No, I don't think you would. I don't think anyone's ever walked on the Sea of Galilee, including Christ himself. That's kidding me, but that's my, you know. This to now is Hellenistic mystery religion presentation. That is, gods who suddenly appear and disappear like Esclopeus or Dionysus. They're able to do these things. Jesus is able to do these things in literary portrait. Now, we have to decide if he did it in the historical being. That's our question. And you're, again, the final arbiter of that, aren't you? You have to make that determination. I know it's going to hurt your faith. I apologize for that. I'm not in a church. I, your faith is your own affair. And I don't mean to hurt it, but uh, to evaluate these questions will have an effect on faith, you know. Um, that shouldn't have an effect. If faith makes you work righteously, then I think you're okay anyway. I don't think there's a problem. But, you know, even Paul says, when I was a child, I thought, saw things as a child, as through a glass of darkness. When I uh, grew up, I put away childish things. I think I had that as a, in my James book as one of the quotes that I put in my, in my dedication page there. Um, so I think Paul has uh, something to say about that, which is perhaps um, useful. In any event, um, uh, so uh, Jesus, uh, uh, so um, you know, we don't know if this is Jesus the God-man walking on the sea, and you'll have to decide. By the way, then they want to touch him, line 36, the hem of his coat, and as many were touched are perfectly well. I, I like to pick these things up as we go because I'm not going to be able to cover everything. That's Matthew 36, 1436. Jerome records a notice about Paul, about James, that is not in any other uh, context that the people of Jerusalem, so holy was James, that the people of Jerusalem used to try to touch the hem of his coat as he walked by. They say, so what? Well, I think this is a play off of that. Any of these things that people trying to touch Jesus and so on, play off notices of that kind uh, about the person of James. You, see, you mean to say James was this and Jesus was them? No, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying I know James was this. You know, it doesn't say they tried to cure themselves from touching him. Now that is superstitious Asclepius kind of thing. You say, who? Who's Asclepius? The Greco-Roman god of healing. And in fact, I think his symbol is on all medical things to this day. With that funny snake thing. You know, on medical symbolism, they have a sort of a crook with a snake twirling around it or something. That was the sign of Asclepius, I think. And if you look up Asclepius, you can get information about him. All the healing centers in the Greek world were dedicated to him, and you came to the god, and you got healed. And here you're touching the healer god in these episodes. Now look, these are beautiful, uh, attractive things. I'm not, I'm not against this. This is like why I call it Hellenistic. It's not Palestinian, you see. So why isn't it Palestinian? Because we don't have that in the documents of the Palestinian tradition until here. We don't have miraculous healers, except the one, a few things about Moses that no one really pays much attention to. He, he, Moses puts his hand in his shirt and it's, pulls it out and it's leprous, and he puts it back in and it isn't leprous. I think 
Jews anyway, just considered a superstitious passage and stuff that that's not actually what. Did you say that was Jerome that says that? Yeah. It's his, I think it's on a commentary on Matthew. I have a I have a reference to it in James. We can do the actual uh, passage in Jerome if you can find it if you look at it in my index. And I have it in my new book too. But that's a very important uh, passage in Jerome. I will go all the touching things go back to that. But it's because James is so holy. Was Jesus so holy that people tried to touch him? Yeah, I would assume so. To my mind, that's what I until I reconstruct the historical Jesus. Jesus James, not Jesus Paul. That's the question. We're, is this material retrospective overlaid by people who knew Greek myth and had a theology already? Or is it historical witness. That, 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 you know where I stand on that, but you, you make your judgment too. Forget me. I'm just, consider me the um, uh, prosecution of the defense or something, and you're the prosecutor or uh, the, the lawyer for the, you're the lawyer for the defense, I'm the prosecutor for the whatever it is, you know, or vice versa. Just think of it as a law court, and uh, we're, we're trying to convince the jury of our position. All right, anyway, you, you can evaluate that. Chapter 50, you see, I'd just like to get the uh, context. Then the scribes and Pharisees from Jerusalem came to uh, Jesus saying, now I always take those things as very, very important. I'm not even looking at you. By the way, you look at the, par uh, the parallels in Mark uh, and Luke, okay? So far, I think this material is only going to be parallel to Mark. If you see something extra in Mark, call my attention to it, because I can't look at both God I can't look at both Bibles at the same time. And I didn't even look at 14. The parallel, you know, sometimes the people put these together and mess them all up with uh, parallels and, uh, you know, it's almost impossible to follow. Um, like that basket thing, for instance, uh, Matthew 14, 21 just goes up to 12 baskets. But Mark really moves on with that. See how Mark moves on with that? Luke basically, you know, adds a few things to Matthew, but look at Mark. I don't think you can tell which gospel came first in these things. Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? Mark uh, 6, uh, 37. And he said, talk to them, how many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they knew, they had said five and two fishes. And he commanded them all should sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat in ranks by the hundreds and fifties, because you know, they're a revolutionary army, if you like, out there, and he's feeding them in the wilderness, like uh, the people, like the Jewish people in the uh, Exodus. And he took five loaves and the two fishes and looked up to heaven, and he blessed and broke the loaves, and he gave to the disciples to set before them, and the two fishes he divided among them. 